Hello, I'm Liam Jenkins, and welcome to highlights of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship. Round 7 of the championship is the crown jewel of Formula 1, the famous Monte Carlo street circuit. The Monaco track is incredibly tight and twisty, and this race will be one that every driver will be striving to finish. Being by far the most unforgiving circuit on the calendar, this track typically sees a very high rate of attrition. Qualifying produced a big surprise with Patrick De Vitt achieving pole position, repeating his effort from the same race three years ago. It was only faster than Speed's second World Championship pole, both coming from De Vitt. Championship leader Bono Quiz qualified close behind in second, just ahead of Twister Racing's Frederick Nilsson. More surprises came in the top ten, with Wayne Rune qualifying in fourth ahead of Morgan Moran in fifth, and the Netrex driver Stephen Rule in sixth. Miko Pumalainen set the seventh fastest time ahead of Atze Kirchhoff in eighth. Too fast for UT manager David Dominguez would start in ninth, with John Eric Saxon rounding out the top ten. Marco Conti narrowly missed out on getting into the top ten, as did Rasmus Tali, who has now failed to make it past Q1 in five starts. Jack Keithley qualified 13th with GT Omega Racing, and the two ghost speed drivers of Parisis and Euler qualified in 14th and 15th place respectively. To the race start, and Patrick De Witt had a great launch off the line, easily keeping his first place into Turn 1. Miranda almost snuck up the inside of Nilsson and Marine, but lost traction on the exit. Pumalana reacted by touching his brakes, but locked up and hit the barrier. With the cars now bunched heading up the hill, a spectacular collision occurred between Conti and Tali. Amazingly, the only driver caught up in the incident was Pumalainen, with the rest of the field managing to avoid the carnage. Conti retired with only three wheels, but Tali continued on, albeit with a great deal of damage to his car. Out of the tunnel, Morgan Moran pulled off an aggressive pass on Stephen Rule to take over fifth place. Perhaps distracted by the overtake, Rule clipped a small gap in the armco, resulting in a massive crash, destroying his car and creating the worst pileup in World Championship history. Eight cars were involved in the accident with four drivers retiring. Dominguez, Euler, Rule and Saxon were all out of the race, with Pumalana and Parisis forced to make pits for repairs. At the front, De Vic continued to lead the race ahead of Cuisa Nilsson. When Arima and Morgan Moran were just managing to hold on to the back of the leading trio. And incredibly, Atze Kirchhoff continued on in sixth place despite suffering significant damage in the lap one pileup. Jack Keithley was also struggling on, but he was forced to eventually retire after five laps with immense damage to his steering column. Despite starting from the back of the grid, Mohamed Patel now found himself up into seventh position, just ahead of Jako Mikkonen and Blair Disley. After a long pit stop for repairs, Mikko Pumalainen was now a lap down, but he eventually caught up to the back of Jako Mikkonen. Unfortunately, Pumalainen was caught off guard when Mikkonen pulled over to allow him to unlap himself, and the distraction caused Pumalainen to lock up and hit the barriers, ending his race. Still in the lead, it became apparent that Patrick De Witt was holding up Bono Quiz and Frederick Nilsson, and on lap 21, Quiz pitted for the first of two stops, with Nilsson following him in. Knowing the quick in lap was crucial, De Witt pushed his car to the absolute limits, but unfortunately he scraped the wall on the exit of Tabak, causing minor damage to his car which would need to be repaired. Extra time in the pit lane meant that Huis could easily take over the lead, with Frederick Nilsson right behind him. De Witt emerged in front of Morgan Moran and Atze Kirchhoff, with Moran almost attempting a pass through the hairpin, but De Witt managed to keep it ahead in third place. Rainer Rune's pit stop didn't go to plan either, with the Estonian missing his pit box, having to reverse and losing crucial seconds to Moran. As a result, the GT Omega driver lost out to both Moran and Atze Kirchhoff, dropping him down into sixth position. However, Kirchhoff's race ended several laps later, with the Dutchman hitting the armco at an awkward angle and crashing heavily into the barriers. The second set of stops made no difference to the running order. The Twister team brought in Nilsson first with precision immediately reacting, but Quiz comfortably remained in first place. Having spent the entire race at Quiz's rear wing, there was little Nilsson could do except hope for a mistake from the Dutchman. Wayne Aruma and Mohamed Patel continued their lonely races in fifth and sixth place until a small lapse in concentration caused Patel to hit the wall at the back and lose his front wing. Forced to make an unscheduled stop, the ATR driver emerged from the pits in 7th place, 11 seconds behind Blair Disley, but a determined Patel didn't give up and pushed hard to close down the gap. On the penultimate lap, Patel caught up to the back of the Australian, and it was a veteran Disley who faltered on the exit of the Harbour chicane, 
with a great run to teleport off the impossible, sticking a pass through to back to retake his sixth position. Making it seven from seven, the unstoppable Bono Quiz became the first driver in the World Championship to win twice at the challenging Monte Carlo street circuit. Frederick Nielsen finished less than half a second behind, showing once again that he's got the pace to beat the world champion. An ecstatic Patrick De Witt rounded off the top three, achieving faster than speed's first podium in nearly two years. Morgan Moran finished in fourth place, less than a second behind De Witt. Reyna Rune crossed the line in fifth, and Mohamed Patel finished in sixth place. Coincidentally, it was Moran's, Rooms and Patel's best ever results in a World Championship Grand Prix. Blair Disney finished in 7th ahead of Jakob Mikkonen in 8th, who had only been able to complete limited testing due to technical difficulties. Jim Parisis was the last of the finishers, picking up his first points of the season. With a clean sweep, Bono Quis is now the equivalent of more than three race victories ahead on the points table. Frederick Nielsen has jumped up into second place with another great result, but Jakob Mikkonen is close behind. Neither Greco, Kirchhoff, Pumalan and Tali or Saxon score points this round, so remain in their respective positions. De Witt's podium pushed him inside the top 10 for the first time this season, just two points ahead of Bruno Marquez in 10th. Precision Motorsports have now hit the 250 point mark in the Constructors, with Twister Racing a long way behind. Neither Matt Corp or Netrex managed to score this round, and Too Fast View only managed to pick up 6 points. Much to everyone's surprise, it was the ATR Silverline team who picked up the second highest number of constructor points, being beaten only by Bono Quiz's victory. This has moved the team up into 6th place ahead of Aero F1. Faster than Speed's podium have moved them up into 8th place in the table, and despite Rainer Rim's great result, the GT Mega Racing team have dropped into 9th position. The next round will be the Canadian Grand Prix, and you can watch this race live as it happens. Simply go to www.psrtv.com on the 3rd of July at 5.30pm GMT. We hope you've enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Liam Jenkins, and I'll see you in two weeks' time for round eight of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship.